Embry. And what better coach than Jim Stone is very qualified and can teach these players a lot. Well, we are underway here at Gregory Gym. The Longhorns enter the match 5-0 and on the young season. The Pioneers step in at 3-4. and Logan Eggleston back in the starting lineup after four starters got to rest on Wednesday night against UC Davis. Eggleston with the first point of the match. 1-0 Texas. Coming out, doing what she loves to do, putting that ball away. The reigning ABCA National Player of the Week, third time Eggleston has earned that honor in her career, had 22 kills against Minnesota, 16 against Stanford. Here is Zoe Fleck, the two-time Pac-12 libero of the year, getting ready to serve for Texas. Lead the team with 85 digs and has already become a fan favorite, even though this is only her sixth match as a Longhorn. Drawing a number of oohs and ahs through her first few home matches with her tremendous play on defense, diving all over the place. And we talked to her after one of the recent home matches, and she said she absolutely loves playing in this building in front of this electric crowd. And you can tell, even from her interview, just the way she speaks about Texas and being here, the fans, the people, absolutely loves it. So she thought about quitting the sport at one point, but coming to Texas has revived her passion and love for volleyball. Denver answering with their first point of the match. Haley Green, the 2021 Summit League Freshman of the Year. Green coming in off the bench last night against UC Davis and did an excellent job sparking Denver's offense. Denver, perennial favorites in the Summit League. They've won the Summit League Conference Tournament five of the last seven years. And they grab a point right there. Brianna Green serving 12 aces on the season, three of them yesterday against UC Davis. But a service error, you know, this has been a topic of discussion through the first couple of home matches. Minnesota, the visiting team in the home opener, 19 service errors. We saw UC Davis double-digit service errors. This crowd obviously has an effect on the opposing servers. I think it's worth some points, that's for sure, being in this... Gregory Jim with the loud cheering and fans on your side definitely can get in your head and rattle you. Leilani Okana, unfortunately for Texas, returns the favor. Service error for the Longhorns. Lauren Poulter, senior setter from Aurora, Colorado, team leader in assists. Flying in from the back row was Madison Skinner, the All-American transfer from Kentucky. That one denied by Asia O'Neill. Huge block. Haley Green coming in with a powerful swing, but that just flew off of O'Neill's hands deep in the court. No one there to cover that ball, and that is going down every single time. Team leader in block, she also got to rest in that Wednesday night matchup against UC Davis. Jared Elliott has been saying all offseason this is such a deep squad. As Texas gets the point, they were able to rest so many key players and still pick up the straight sets win the other night. And Eggleston attacking Lockwood there, who was their big hitter the other night. So trying to serve her and keep her out of her offensive rhythm is a good strategy. Logan Eggleston. Number two in Texas history and aces, just 10 away from shying the all-time record. She's got 175. Jordan Lockwood with the point, the grad transfer from Pittsburgh. Jordan Lockwood with a team high, 12 kills yesterday. That came on 49 total attacks against UC Davis. Freshman Elena Finnegan serving it up and results in an ace for the Pioneers who pull within one. Beautiful serve, nice hand on the ball, deep in the court. And Texas just not moving the feet there to that end line, gets away from. That one off the top of the net. Kana had to dive for it. And Texas gets the point, Skinner off the block. 
and Texas is doing such a great job this year. If they don't get the perfect pass, they're bettering that second contact and lifting the ball up for their hitters to really get a nice attack on it. Madison Skinner second on the team in kills. Here is Asia O'Neill serving one ace on the season so far. Double called on that set going back just not a clean contact. The first contact can be a double so if you see people take it high hands on the serve and it looks like it might be a little bobbled that is okay but not on the second touch or a third. Texas back out to a three point lead here in the opening set against the Denver Pioneers. Oh and quickly sent down by the senior from Honolulu, Sage Ka'ahida Torres. Smart play here. She sees that that pass is going tight to the net, reads it well, and just gets that ball straight down. That is just good volleyball right there. SKT known for her assist. Number six in the nation currently in assist per set, surprising the defense. Texas block is there. Kayla Caffey, the All-American transfer from Nebraska. O'Neal with the dig. Eggleston on the back end. She's worked on her defense hard this offseason. And there is the kill from Skinner and the Horns. No matter where you set that ball on the Longhorn side, the heat is coming at you. So Denver has to be ready for a lot of heat coming and be able to lift that ball up. Too much to handle on that attack. Two-time All-American Madison Skinner, Texas, on a 4-0 run. Just getting a hand on it was Gianna Bartolo. SKT, Caffey. Goes down through the blockers there. Denver not pressing quite over the net. Able to sneak that ball through the block. Time out here at Gregory Gym. The host Torns in control up 10-4 early against Denver. Stay in the game with a number one team like Texas. They res respond with a point. Caddy Boyer coming up with the kill. Now Denver a year ago went 23 and 6. In fact, they're coming off nine consecutive winning seasons. The Summit League champions. That one is in. Another ace for Denver. Their second of the set. Love that sideline serve. Trying to get Eagle well Madison Skinner there now on the sideline and pushing her outside. Hoping to take her out of her offensive rhythm. Akano off the Bartolo serve. Caffey going to the corner and gets it. Looking for that deep pocket. A little bit high on that set, but she got a good hand on it and just pushed that over the Denver defense and block. Beautiful deep shot using the entire court for that one. She got the start yesterday against UC Davis has only played in six sets through the first five matches. Getting her second consecutive start. Eggleston with the dig in the back row. That one goes into the net. Point Pioneers. Texas coming off four consecutive wins against ranked opponents to open the season and beating an unranked team sweeping the Aggies of UC Davis on Wednesday night. Here's Jordan Lockwood. Skinner, that one is in. Texas getting perfect placement right now. Great pass, set that up for a nice short approach and a beautiful high swing again to the back part of that court. Remember Skinner, only a sophomore, still has three years of eligibility left. Jared Elliott calls her, quote, our franchise player. And serves up an ace. Well, between the hits from the front row and those service aces, we can see why, Jarrett. The franchise delivering for Texas. Nice hand, and that ball just dropping right in front of Denver's libero. Horns up by six. That one a little too strong. <laughs> And the Longhorns starting off hot in this one, hitting 500. Denver right now in the opening set, hitting 083. Each team with a couple of aces. Ryan Wilkins, the junior. 
Eggleston with some power, but denied by the Denver block. And by the way, the Pioneers are one of the best blocking teams in the nation early in the season. Eggleston tries again, denied. Green. And a net from Texas. A little too much press there on the block. Hitting the tape and a break for Denver. They're getting, Denver's getting a lot of nice touches right now that are high that they can cover. And when they get those opportunities, they've got to put that ball away. Denver entered the week with the second most total blocks in the country. Just a half block shy of the national lead. Eggleston got all of that one and more. Point Texas. Beautiful pass by Zoe Fleck. Fantastic little go set out here to Eggleston with a huge crush right between the blockers. Number eight all time in Texas history in kills. Zoe Fleck. Fleck with a diving dig. We've seen a number of those early in this season. Another point for the Horns, 15-9. I mean, Texas offense is so quick. You see the ball going over, and they're just getting rid of it right away. Hard for Denver blockers to figure out which way the middle should be going. SKT doing a great job with distribution, helping her hitters only with one blocker up. Got Heine Torres already with seven assists. Tolo tracking that one nearly into the stands. O'Neill taps it over. Diving in was Bartolo. She was just on the other side of the corner a moment ago. She flew down there to save it. Molly Phillips in between two defenders. Set Molly get a kill. She is so steady. Love that when she gets set every ball, she is really putting that away. Set up with a nice little dig here from Denver to keep that ball alive. But in the end, Phillips right between the Denver block for the put away. And Molly Phillips against Stanford, which Jared Alley called maybe the most impressive win of the season on the road. Came up with 10 kills, no errors yesterday. This been Wednesday, seven kills at 385 against UC Davis. With so many All-Americans, so many big names, she consistently gets overlooked, maybe a little underrated at times, but she is just a force offensively. And we're definitely noticing her, that's for sure. These last matches, she has put up the numbers and shown that you can really count on her when you need a point. Making smart decisions and just bringing it when she can. Talk to Jared Elliott about the tough schedule early on to start the season, four ranked opponents. And he said, listen, it is all about the RPI. It's great for the fans, it's great for the broadcasters. Hey, we have these tremendous ranked matchups. And he said, we are just worried about the RPI, plain and simple. And they've looked extremely strong early in the season. He said, listen, this is. The funnest team I've ever been around as far as chemistry, the deepest team. They could be in line for a special season. I think they're in for the long haul, and they're all focused on that championship trophy. But one game at a time, and when these players are coming off the bench, as we saw yesterday, and possibly even today as the match goes on, everyone is working so hard that, you know, when you get those chances to put them in and get the experience and play is so important as we go on with conference play and NCAA tournament to know that I'm not nervous to put someone in off the bench. They've been here before, they've figured it out, and I can count on them and know and have the confidence that anyone on their bench can step out on the court. Texas only dropped two sets total in those four ranked matches and again coming off their first road win at Stanford in Longhorns history. Like serving is the Longhorns unable to get the point there. That one off of Eggleston. And we talked about Denver's recent success coming out of the Summit League. Nine straight winning seasons. They are the preseason favorites yet again. And in fact, over the last five years, the Pioneers, they're the 13th winningest program in the nation. Winning nearly 80% of their matches. Brianna Green serving with a service error. Jim Stone, four-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Explaining things to his club, it is a tremendous luxury to have when a Hall of Famer can step in and temporarily take over. 
Haley Green. Haley Green powering that one through the Texas block. Again, when you're not pressed over, sealing that block is when the ball can roll down the front like that. And I did talk to Jim Stone yesterday, and he's, I said, how did this happen? Did you unretire and come back? And he said, well, Tom got in a bind with the assistant leaving later, asked me to do a favor, and I said, when friends ask for favors, you do anything you can to make it happen. And then the diagnosis came, and then he stepped up to, to be the head coach, which he wasn't expecting, but happy that he could be there to support the team. You bring up a good point. He was hired before the head coach, Tom Hogan, who was diagnosed with testicular cancer. And Coach Hogan, by the way, in good spirits as he continues to go through chemotherapy. Coach, we are thinking of you as well. Asia O'Neill, meanwhile, with the point for Texas. Denver just not getting under those ones. Texas getting on top of the ball so well. Getting it down sooner. Denver needs to take a little step up because they are getting high above the net, hitting over that block. That is a tough shot to try and defend as the Longhorns back up by six. Eggleston with the serve. Tapped over by Lockwood. Now this is an interesting player, Jordan Lockwood, on her fourth different program in five years. Spent the last two seasons at Pittsburgh, helping them get to the Final Four for the first time in program history. Before that at Navarro College and Houston as well. And Lockwood coming in hard. I thought she was going to swing on that one, but great vision seeing that open shot right behind the two blockers. Well, keep an eye on her. That is a player with tremendous power that was on display yesterday against UC Davis. Too strong, too much power from Skinner. The Pioneers creeping back in this one, hanging with the Longhorns. Now we saw UC Davis hang with Texas in the first two sets, but that was without Logan Engelston. Madison Skinner and a number of Texas starters, including Asia O'Neill, who comes up with the point there. I love her backslide behind when she's going behind the setter like that. She's getting up so high on top of that ball, hitting that middle shot or the deep angle. That one line, she has great range. Meanwhile, here comes Melanie Parra for Texas, coming off a career-high 15 kills in her first start of the season. Hit 4.06 against UC Davis the other night. Of course, as that lethal serve, Skinner helping with the block. Denied, Parra saves it, Skinner, SKT sends it over for Texas. Play continues, but Denver gets the point. Memphis, Glasgow. Run up for the Pioneers, and Nicole Brenna, protege. Well, I coached her on the beach, but that's what Denver needs from Glasgow. They're looking for some answers. They lost about 2,000 swings from last year's team, Coach Stone said. So they need some offensive people to step up and score points. She struggled against Davis, but hopefully tonight she can bring it against Texas. 2,000 swings, that is awfully tough to replace, even for a program like Denver, who in the Summit League just reloads every year. SKT serving for Texas. Former All-American at Utah. Into the net. Third service error for the Longhorns. Each team with three service errors and a couple of aces as well. Jordan Lockwood, team leader in kills. Not too bad from the service line either this year with eight aces. That one hammered by Caffey off the defender, Point Texas. Caffey's beautiful, coming in here with a nice high swing and much better connection so far tonight than the other night against Davis. A few little missed sets, I think, here and there are timing things, but really cleaned that up and so far looking great. Seventh collegiate season for Kayla Caffey, redshirted as a freshman in Nebraska back in 2016, got the medical redshirt in 2018 and an extra year of COVID eligibility. But Texas right there with another service error. That is now four for the Longhorns in the opening set. Denver has bumped their hitting percentage up to 318, by the way. It's the best of any set in their trip to Austin, including against UC Davis. 
A diving save by Bartolo. To the far side, tapped over Skinner. Eggleston, too much from the senior. And if you want that rally to end, you know where to yes. set it. She will guarantee a kill so far tonight, anytime she's getting the chance. The rally killer, four-time All-American. Now with a match high four kills, Texas back up by five with Zoe Flex serving. Green denied by O'Neill, but it stayed on Texas' side. Almost got the pancake there for Eggleston, but just a little short. And we saw Green the other night against Davis. She was bringing it here with the offensive game. So maybe this is one of the answers for Denver this season. Miranda Green, top 20 in the nation, by the way, in total blocks. Three aces the other night, service error. Each team now with four service errors. Keone Leakana back at the match for Texas. She's lethal from the service line, 66 for her career. Led Nebraska in that department a season ago with 42. Tapped over, Fleck was ready. Just a miss set on that one to the middle to Asia O'Neill. And you know, still preseason, trying to get these kinks worked out, get our rhythm going. I mean, you could dare say Denver looks better today than they did in any of the four sets yesterday against UC Davis. 100%, I think they got the kinks worked out, made some adjustments, maybe they just feel a little more confident today, having played a set here yesterday. Eggleston trying to put an end to that confidence does not, and we're back to a three-point set. They're passing a lot better. For starters, Denver, when they're getting the chance and they're serving a lot better. So that's the key. You got to keep the ball in the court and rely on your amazing block that you have. You have to think for Denver, you have to come in with the attitude of there is zero pressure on us right now. Nobody expecting us to win. We're coming out of the Summit League. We're three and four on the year. And Texas says, okay, that's enough. Let's get back to what we do best. O'Neill with the kill, set point for the Longhorns coming up. To her go-to slide in the back, putting it away all over the court tonight. And the teams that have nothing to lose though, Alex, can be very dangerous. Absolutely, Eggleston trying to seal set number one. That one heading towards the stand and outfitting one of the best servers to ever do it for the Longhorns with an ace to end the set. Texas takes the opener 25-20 over Denver. But all in all, way better than yesterday, I gotta say. Hopefully they can keep the consistent play into this next set, but really cleaned up their serving and passed much better tonight to give them a chance to spread the offense. As far as Texas is concerned, Logan Eggleston with a couple of aces, four kills leading the way. She's now eight aces shy of matching the all-time record. After getting the night off on Wednesday, she's back to her old self. A little refreshing there and coming out doing what she does best as we called her the rally killer earlier. When she gets the ball, she puts it away and doing an excellent job from the service line as well. Just an all-around complete player. So Eggleston with four kills. Skinner with three, along with O'Neill and Caffey, who had three as well for Texas, somewhat of an embarrassment of riches in their roster from top to bottom, which Jared Elliott calls again the deepest he's ever had. So set number two on the way. You know, UC Davis came out of their performance against Texas. The most points they scored this set was 19. They felt extremely confident and looked fantastic yesterday. Denver has to feel good coming out of that set despite dropping it. I mean, they're playing the number one team in the mm -hmm. country and they hung in there. So hopefully it can carry over to set number two. Off to Madison Skinner serve. SKT setting it up for Eggleston. The green. And by the way, for the Longhorns, the freshman, the talented top 10 recruit Devin Kahawai in there. We saw her extensively against UC Davis. Had a career high six kills, three blocks. Gatorade Player of the Year coming out of Hawaii.
After taking the first point, Pioneers with a service error number five off the green serve. Brianna Green keep missing that ball long, set one a little bit longer, so she's taking a little heat off the serve, but maybe just a little bit more, or take a step back to keep that ball in the court. Zoe Fleck, 92 career aces. A couple as a Longhorn, make it 93. You say ace and she delivers. She's such a talented player. We always talk about her defense, her agility on the back end. Not a bad server as well. And now with three during her young Longhorns career and just her sixth match wearing the burnt orange. The block by the freshman, Kawhi. <laughs> Denver ends up with the point. Caddy Boyer doing that last night and bringing it again tonight. Passionate fire that the team needs. She was defensive player of the week last week with some incredible blocking. Poulter the senior serving it up. Kahawai. That is why she was a highly heralded recruit coming out of Hawaii. So much power. Wow, coming in on the right side and just crushing that line. Too much to handle for Denver's libero. Wow, that is some major power. Playing in her 11th set of the season. Gets a breather. Here's Akana, a transfer from Nebraska. Back over on Texas's end. Golden opportunity for Eggleston. Lockwood. Asia O'Neill. Trying to go off the hands there, but just a little bit too wide. But her go-to back slide or back A, she is, doesn't miss it that often. Pioneers hanging with the Longhorns in this set. Denver hitting 333 in set number two. Texas with zeros in that column. That's the second time Sage Kahana Torres has done that in this match. She wants to get up on the kill list here on our stats, and she's doing a good job. Every time she's dumped it so far, we've seen this year, she is scoring a point. She's done that about two or three times per match. She was one of those starters who got to rest. By the way, on Wednesday night against UC Davis, along with Eggleston, Skinner, and O'Neill. Lockwood, Zoe Fleck back there. But the point for Denver. Lockwood bringing some nice heat for Denver on the right side, coming in. Quick little back set, just tooling it off Skinner's outside hand. The crowd here a little bit stunned at Gregory Jim. Pioneers. Tied once again with number one, Texas. Eggleston, tremendous dig by Poulter, the senior. Fleck diving in front of Eggleston, SKT. Free ball for Denver. That one denied by Asia O'Neill in the middle, but Denver gets the point, and the Pioneers have grabbed the lead in Austin. The first lead for Denver, and that's what they need to do. When they get a free ball, an opportunity, put the ball away so they can score those points. They are hitting 444 in this set. Texas 167. Madison Skinner with the point for the Longhorns. Brianna Green trying to get to that right side to get two up, but just a little bit floating. Had that left hand coming off the net. Skinner now with four kills, tied for the team lead. And we are tied yet again. Asia O'Neill, 72 career aces, make it 73. I gotta say, the Longhorns have got a great hand on that ball. Fleck had the same serve where it just looks like it's gonna go somewhere and just bottoms out right in front of the Denver players. Texas with five aces already in this match. That was touched by a Texas player. Denver responds with a point. Memphis Glasgow with a kill. Coming up on that one, she's been leading Denver the last few matches. And again, as we mentioned last night, came out struggling a little bit. But tonight looks like she's got her confidence back. 
Texas. In this story, gymnasium, 425 wins, just 59 losses. But Denver right now in set number two. They're giving them a nice little run for their money after Texas took the opening set, 25-20. Longhorns have dropped just two sets through their first five matches of the season. Caffey. Somehow they kept it alive. A tremendous dig by Finnegan, and Denver gets the point. They are fired up. What a beautiful dig, beautiful back row attack from Lockwood. If it's not from the front, she's ready for it in the back. Coming in and just right by Skinner's outside hand for the beautiful kill. She's one of the most powerful players we've seen this season. It is harnessing that power. Team leading 64 kills coming in, but was only hitting 090. Well, Texas responds. And Skinner didn't like that she got that one by her, so she's gonna get it right back to her. The All-American with the point. Skinner now with a team high five kills. Just like Lockwood for the Pioneers. SKT serving for Texas. Laskow with the point. Senior from Manhattan Beach, California. Denver back up by two. I love this off-speed shot from Glasgow coming in, looking like she's going to swing, and just a nice off-speed to that open area in the court over the blockers. How about this second set? Pioneers hitting 583 in this set. Texas 333. That one back flex up. Well, Denver, okay, what's going on here right now? If you're the Longhorns, do you need a timeout? I think Denver's on a roll right now, and a timeout is a good call as Texas takes one. Just regroup, see what's going on. But Texas, like we said, when you got nothing to lose, they could come out and be very dangerous. Love to hear what Eric Sullivan... Wow is all you can say looking at that. The unranked Pioneers hitting 583, the number one team in the nation. Texas hitting 200 here in the second set. Nicole, what is going on? Well, as we mentioned earlier, Denver is an incredible blocking team. So when you keep the ball in the court, serve tough, you can count on that great defense that they have with their block. And the other thing is they're passing much better tonight. I think the timeout work for Eric Sullivan, interim head coach of the Longhorns, Kayla Caffey with the point. By the way, we will talk to Jarrett Elliott coming up after this set comes to a conclusion. Eric Sullivan wearing that interim tag for the second straight match. Coach Elliott in the COVID protocol. This is his last day in the protocols. He's feeling better, but another service error for the Longhorns, number five of the match. Denver up 11-8 right now. Now this was a Denver team, keep in mind, for those who didn't watch yesterday on LHN against UC Davis, this is not the same Pioneers team we saw. They struggled mightily against the Aggies of UC Davis. That one hammered past Skinner for the point. And Pioneers up by four. And that started with a tough serve. Too much for the Longhorns to handle. Gets a free ball over the net and puts the ball away, taking advantage of the opportunities when they get them. And you're right, this is a new, this is like a new team. I saw Coach Stone earlier and I looked at him, he's like, gotta figure this out, make some changes. Well, he's done an excellent job. Here's the freshman setter, Lauren Carter, with the serve. The senior Eggleston blocked but out of play. Texas responds with their ninth point of the set. How about this?
on this last play about who's going to take that ball. Looks like everyone's okay. Keone Leakana serving Texas within one. Diving to keep that one alive was Poulter. Eggleston sends it down Bartolo with a fantastic dig. Oh, scooped over by SKT. Nice recovery, tight ball coming through the net. And I'll just throw that one back over my shoulder. All right. She can do it from the block, straight down, front or behind. We've seen three different kills from her tonight in three different ways. Sage, Kahina Torres, all business, helping Texas go on a 5-1 run. We are tied at 13. And untied as Texas back in front now, up by one. Denver just needs to take a breath right here, go back to what was working, getting that pass going. That timeout helped Texas regroup, go on, get on fire. Akana serving is Texas since the timeout on a huge run until that service <laughs> error. They were on a 7-3 run. Denver still hitting 412 in this set. Texas 353. Overall, these squads neck and neck for the match in the hitting percentage department. Service error. And one thing to mention with Denver is they're in altitude. So coming down here to play a little bit different on the serve, you gotta take some of off That's some off of point. it because it's gonna go a little bit longer than they're used to. Six service errors now for the Pioneers. Falls over Gregory Jim with the senior serving Eggleston. Madison Skinner Bartolo matching Zoe Fleck in the impressive dig department. That time it was Poulter for Denver. Skinner takes something off of that. Glasgow, there's Zoe Fleck. Madison Skinner at it again. Point Texas. Nice rally and great digs by Denver, keeping this ball alive, but just weren't able to put it away. Beautiful digs by their defense here. The Bartolo and Fleck putting on a show for their respective squads. And Skinner coming up huge off the middle blocker's hands. Logan Eggleston, another ace. Well, the momentum has shifted and it might be a good idea for Denver to call a timeout. Third ace of the contest for the senior, Texas, up by three. Four, it has just about been all Texas on a 9-2 run. And since that timeout was called, going on a 10-4 run. Last few points by the Longhorns before the break. Defense by Zoe Flagg. We're getting used to seeing that match in and match out. How about Logan Eggleston now? Seven aces away from matching the all-time record in Texas. What do you think Eric Sullivan said to this squad during that timeout? They've looked different since then. I think he probably told him, let's take a breath. Let's go back to how, what we know how to play and what we want to do. Worry about our side of the net. And that's exactly what they did. Took care of the ball in the pass, got the offense going, and Eggleston went back and rattled some great serves off to help him push ahead. And Denver had a few errors consecutively after grabbing that big lead. And has allowed Texas to not only jump in front, go up by four. She'll take it. Ace number four of the contest for Logan Eggleston. Using the equipment to her advantage. Oh, hitting the top of that tape, just dribbling over. Not a good feeling when you're on the receiving end of that, but of course, if you do it, loving it. Six away from tying the all-time record now. Well, Texas feeling it, obviously. Up 19-14. 5-0 run, don't forget. Head coach Jared Elliott will be joining us after this set comes to a conclusion. We get a little in-match analysis from the head coach who's at home resting comfortably, feeling better in the COVID protocol, taking his place. Interim head coach Eric Sullivan. And again, Texas, their fans here were a little bit surprised earlier in this set when Denver, who came in with a losing record 3-4 and four on the season, 
They lost in four sets yesterday to UC Davis, but they were leading the number one team of the nation, Texas, by four. At one time, they were hitting better than 600 in this set. But all of a sudden, Texas roaring back in front. And yesterday, Denver not consistent. They would play well one set, then the next set kind of flop, and then back again. Today, they came out much better, more consistent with the pass and serve. And again, maybe part of it is, hey, we're playing number one. Let's just go out. Nothing to lose. And maybe that's helped them take a little pressure off. Whereas yesterday with UC Davis, perhaps expected to win or thought they would. Don't know exactly. But, you know, different teams, different pressures come along with it. And listen, when you're number one in the nation, you got a target on your back for every match, whether the opponent is ranked or unranked. Texas, again, has only dropped two sets all season so far. Took the first one, 25-20 over the Pioneers. Now 19-14. By the way, Logan Eggleston now one a shy from matching her career high. Again, she has four in this match so far, along with six kills. Almost as many aces as kills. That is unreal. <laughs> Logan Eggleston single-handedly has more aces than the entire Denver team. Glasgow. One out of bounds. Point Pioneers. Coming in with an aggressive swing, just going off the Longhorns block out of bounds. Good use there for Glasgow. Good idea. Denver only hit better than 100 in one set yesterday, one of the four sets. They're hitting 333 for this entire match, but Texas hitting even better. Asia O'Neill with the point. Asia O'Neill coming up huge here, getting on top of that ball and going down right in front of the 10 foot line, bouncing that ball right into the stands. Longhorns now hitting 400 in the match. Here's Melanie Parra. Top five in the nation a season ago and aces per set. One ace so far this season. A service error for the Longhorns, their seventh of the contest. Para went on quite a run yesterday with an ace, as you mentioned, but just a long scoring run with a tough serve that they weren't able to, well, two days ago, excuse me, against UC Davis to return. There's Jordan Lockwood. Kana was there. Kayla Caffey, I mean, you can just see the power she's garnering as she leaps up in the air. That is awfully tough to stop. And tonight, the middles are getting much more involved. The connection is much cleaner than against UC Davis. And it's great to see just those little adjustments making it work. SKT is really getting those middles up there well. And by the way, Texas doing this without Bella Bergmark, who's been one of the most impressive players of the young season so far for Texas. Longhorns block. Texas up by six. Look at those hands just reaching in at the last minute, helping get that block up. 14 to four Longhorns run. Texas once again looking like the number one team in the nation. Glasgow. Madison Skinner. Oh! <laughs> it looked like she was going to bring the thunder and surprise the defense. There. A little early on that swing, but nice hang time in the air. Just getting this ball <laughs> nicely over the block. SKT. Martolo just jumped in front of that one. Skinner. Poulter. Net from Texas as they turned off the, the net. So a break for Denver. Haley Green coming in back for the front row for Denver. From the service line, the Pioneers, three aces and six service errors so far today. Off the Wilkins serve. Freshman Kahawai back in the match for Texas. Longhorns with the point. Double called on Poulter there, just bobbled the ball a little bit, trying to get that out to the outside hitter. 
seen a number of self-enforced errors from the Pioneers in this set. Set point coming up for the Longhorns. Halter serving. And there it is, the Longhorns take set number two, 25-17. Ending on a 17-5 run. You know, Devin Place is playing some tonight in the opposite, which is great. Um, and you might get to see Melanie here in game three some. Um, so we've got a lot of different players in there, and, and we've tried to rotate them a little bit because they deserve it. They've worked hard, and uh, we need to take some good long looks at them. Well, Coach, we are glad to hear that you're feeling better. I know you get out of the protocol tomorrow. And we're looking forward to seeing you back on the sideline. Okay. Hook them horns. Jared Elliott, the winningest coach in Texas Longhorns history. And missing today's match. Thank you, Coach. But he will be back for their next contest against Houston. Third set underway. Again, Longhorns taking the first two sets against the Pioneers. 25-20, 25-17. Kaha Hawaii keeping that one alive here in set number three for Texas. The car is out there as well to begin this set. Caffey denied by the Denver block. And they entered the week with the second most blocks in the nation. They know that's one of their strengths, so they want to start off that set with a great huge block. Get some momentum on their side coming out of that second set loss. Gianna Bartolo serving for the Pioneers. Service error number seven. I like how she's trying to get that ball deep on the end line. Just barely missed it. Keep the Longhorns back. Try to throw off their offense. Zoe Flex served it up for Texas. The Longhorns with seven aces so far today. Glasgow out of play. That was a little misset, set over Glasgow's head, tried to keep it in, but those are the kind of plays you've got to clean up against a number one team. So again, we've seen just about everybody we expected at a starting lineup today after a number of players got to rest Wednesday. But we do want to mention that Bella Bergmark getting today off. Coach Elliott told us, listen, this has been one of the most impressive Surprising players so far that we brought over the new players. You know, you talked about the All-Americans, Caffey, Skinner, Fleck coming over. Bella Bergmark has been just as good as anybody so far this year for Texas. And while at Cal, she was top four in hitting percentage for the whole Pac-12 conference. So we know she's an excellent player. And like you said, deep at every position. Great chance for these players to come off the bench, to come in, and all of them have been perform performing so well. It's like, what do you do? I mean, it's a good problem and a tough problem. Well, especially in the day and age of the transfer portal, you know, that has to go into consideration as well, who you're going to play, who you're not. Especially if, if you're an extremely deep team, that is a major factor. That one saved by Bartolo. Here is Lockwood. The block there, Para and O'Neill stepped up. Great lineup by O'Neill and Parr on that one, and a nice press, getting those hands over the net, and that ball just going straight down. Lockwood trying to kick that one up, but just out of reach. Texas up 4-2 here in the third set. And another error by Denver, trying to go back on that slide. Overset the hitter. So we've had it from the outside and now behind. Got to get that connection going. That was something they struggled with yesterday against UC Davis, which we haven't seen so far. But now maybe the nerves are kicking a little. Especially over the second half of this match. Glasgow. Texas stepping it up defensively. Zoe Fleck was there. SKT setting up Para. Lockwood again, too strong. And they're going to her a lot right now in the back row. Again, we saw this against Davis, setting her ton on the outside, a ton from the back row. A lot of pressure to be putting that ball away if you're getting the majority of the sets. Texas has now won 11 of the last 14 points, going back to the second set. A little 3-0 run here for the Horns in the third set. Eighth service error. If there has been a 
problem for Texas in this one. They have more service errors than Denver. Well, they have so many aces, so I think that would be pretty even on that part when you look at the ratios, but going for the serve and trying to work on it against Denver here. And Jared Elliott obviously has to be pleased with this performance by Texas as they now go up and extending their lead. There you get a look at the service series. For the long words, we talked about their tough upcoming, their tough previous schedule to start the season. And we'll get to their upcoming schedule in a moment. But first, let's take a look at Para and that lethal serve. With the Longhorns up 7-3 is actually the score here in the third set. Para with the dig. O'Neal! Talk about lethal. She is lethal behind the setter every single time. Getting sharper and sharper. Beautiful angle coming in and just dropping right in front of the Denver defense. Devastating attack from Asia O'Neill, the redshirt senior from Southlake. 11th in the nation in hitting percentage, by the way. And the block. Lockwood diving in is Zoe Fleck. Skinner, that is in. There we Texas. go. Missed that one long last set, but she nailed that one right on that back line, tagging it. Defense not even near it. Waiting for that hard hit down, but love how she gets this deep in the court. Started off by, yet again, another incredible Zoe Fleck dig. Always flying around all over the place back there for Texas. Para serving yet again. Service error number nine. I saw Fleck have an acai bowl before, so now I know her secret. I had one too, we, but I'm not flying we around all did. here. Yes. <laughs> well, coming up after today's match, Texas will get ready to take on Houston. And their next opponent, Brianna Green serving. The Denver Pioneers, Parr got all of that one, but Lockwood is ready, out of play, point for Texas. I thought that stab from Lockwood was gonna be clear, but it just kinda kept going off the court. Texas handling this well. Keep an eye on Asia O'Neill's serve here. She's very good at popping it and just dropping it right down. Asia O'Neill with one of Texas's seven aces in this match. Another double for Poulter from Denver. Couldn't get under that pass quick enough to push that outside. Well, Texas with just one ranked opponent in the next five matches, a far cry from four straight ranked opponents to open up the season. Again, their next match coming up Thursday on LHN against Houston. And we'll take on High Point after that. A ranked Kansas squad. Following those matches, Pioneers with the point meanwhile. Denver's got to go back to that tough serving. They started the first two sets off, try to catch up some points here. Got a hand on that one. Skinner tries to tap it over. Pioneers keep it alive. Lockwood, the block was there. Skinner and Caffey combining. Here's Kayla Caffey on the right side. Point Longhorns. Sweet connection there behind the setter. Caffey's really locked in tonight. Good improvement from the game against UC Davis with a connection with SKT. And yikes, look out. These middles are on fire. Kayla Caffey now with six kills, along with Logan Eggleston. Madison Skinner leading the way with eight. Rex sets up Skinner. The block was there from Denver, and it pays off with the point. Skinner probably not getting the set she wanted. A little bit inside on that, but trying to go off the blocker's hands, which is a smart shot to try to cover it and get another opportunity. Well, the hitting percentage getting much more lopsided in favor of the Longhorns. who are currently hitting 373 for the match. Denver, 172. Kayla Caffey, another kill. 
quite an arm from Caffey. So much power. Front or back, she is nailing it right now. Coming in on that three. Denver, really nowhere to be seen. Had an open net. Caffey, the elder statesman of the Longhorns, when she was a freshman at Nebraska, the current crop of Texas freshmen were just 12 years old. Getting her autograph. A lot, a lot of experience, to say the least. Here is Lockwood denied. Yikes. Now that would be quite a replay. Block bunking off Lockwood's head into the net. Hopefully she's okay, but that ball just bounced right back on her. What a press. Para up so high, flying out to that antenna. Arrived on campus a month ago, a late addition, the All-American. Well, the middle's connection tonight is much elevated prior to the, well, from the UC Davis game that we saw. They're, they had a few missed sets there or connections, but tonight cleaned it up, and they are really getting behind that ball, putting it away. Cholo with the serve. To Hawaii. Freshman out of Hawaii with the point. Right side, left side. She's hitting both sides and doing well. Just brings so much power with every attack. Molly Phillips usually there in the opposite, but Kaha Y stepping in and at 6-4, putting up a nice block as well. Three kills on three attacks for the freshman. Denver gets the point, however. 15-8, Longhorns in front. Three aces for the Pioneers compared to eight service errors. Melanie Para, oh, somehow it went off Lockwood. Bartolo tried to keep it alive, and it went out of play. A nice approach here coming in. Angle, a little ping pong from Denver, but too much heat to get that ball over. Para on a trampoline there. That is her second kill of the contest. Texas doubling up the Pioneers. Into the match for Texas, Riley Heinrich. Denver responds with a point. Heinrich played in the first two sets Wednesday night against UC Davis. Sophomore out of nearby Georgetown. By the way, speaking of Georgetown, there's one player from Georgetown, Caddy Boyer on Denver, but there are six total players from Texas including a few from, like we said, nearby Georgetown. One played up the road at Westlake, another from San Antonio. A big Texas connection for the Pioneers, half a dozen Lone Star State natives. Point Longhorns. No touch on that one. I think the ball went right into the top of the tape, missed the Longhorn hands. Denver getting some chances with those covers, but just not able to put the ball away to score some points. Para serving. Set up green. Madison Skinner has to reach back for it a little bit. Here's Haley Green again off a Longhorn. Point Pioneers. Denver relying on their outsides a lot right now for some kills. When the middles, actually their hitting percentage is quite high. Caddy Boyer, 750. Brianna Green, a little bit, she's a little bit low right now, but when they're getting it to Caddy, she's putting it away. But they're not able to get them involved right now with their passing. Madison Skinner, an absolute laser beam from the All-American. Exactly what you said, Alex. Laser beam right to that corner. Turned it across her body just past the setter. She's got a match high nine kills, hitting 350. Para taps that one up in the air. SKT, this time the defense was ready. That one hammered off of O'Neal by Haley Green. Great quick transition from Denver. Nice little shoot set out to the outside to Green, and she's able to put it away. 
Well, Denver hanging around here, not ready to leave Austin just yet. Fighting here in the third set. Lauren Poulter, the senior, serving, diving. That was Skinner. Dropped over by Kayla Caffey. Kill number eight. Great vision by Caffey going behind there and just a nice little tip behind the blockers. She saw two up in her face there and made a good decision to poke it over. Kayla Caffey is hitting 636 in the contest. That one off the fingertips of Fleck. Para kept it alive, but it goes into the net. Off the hands of Skinner. Both of them reading that ball well, going for it. Luckily, Para was there to help get it up. Just not enough to get that one over there, but we have seen him do it before. They shared a good laugh about it afterwards. Seven points set. Lockwood. Skinner. They set up Lockwood again. Again, she's got so much power, but trying to keep it in play has been the challenge. Well, that one not quite on top of it. Sometimes she gets a little bit low and doesn't get a good hand on top of that ball to get some top spin on it. And that's what we saw yesterday and today, a couple on these long ones. Glasgow. SKT over to Para. No, oh, that one was out. 20 to 13 now here in the third set. She has got some heat behind mm -hmm. that ball. Quiet off the court, but a loud swing. The talented sophomore, powerful. There's the block by Denver. Free ball for the Pioneers. Lockwood, Para. Make it a name for herself defensively. I love the reaction by Caffey every time saying, wow, all right. Come on, Caffey, we know you can block the ball. And again, going back to Lockwood, this was a good pass with the free ball. And I think try to set the middles and get them going. Denver's not getting those middles in right now. And I think that would help open up this offense and not have, they're setting Lockwood all the time. Texas is getting two players up in her face every time. It's hard to put the ball away. Para known for offense, coming up with a number of key blocks here in the second and third set. Save that one with the dig. Texas overall in the match with five blocks, but Denver with the point. Texas hitting 362 on the season. The Longhorns came in hitting 310 as a team, but Jared Elliott said he's more concerned with error percentage than hitting percentage. That one out of play off Denver. Great tool from Kahawai coming on the opposite in, thumb down right off Memphis Glasgow's outside hand. The pogo has begun, Alex. Mm -hmm. Heinrich serving. Glasgow diving for that one with Riley Heinrich. And Para well wide there. 22 15. Para trying to tag that sharp angle, missing that one again. Maybe an adjustment trying to go for that deep corner instead of that sharper one. Para with two kills on now nine attacks serving for the Pioneers. Elena Finnegan, the freshman from Webster City, Iowa. Asia O'Neill. Haley Green with the point. Longhorn's there for the block, but just comes down right in front of him. Again, sneaking that ball by. Green's been doing that a few times today. Powering that through the Longhorn block. The sophomore has nine kills. That's as much as anybody in the match from either team. The service error 
Number nine for Denver. Longhorns getting closer to match point. Still a couple away. Para one ace on the season. Tapped over Fleck, diving for it, was able to make contact, but into the net. Those 17 points now, Denver trying to climb back in this third set and show some life here. Good vision by Brianna Green there, pushing that tip to the corner. Fleck with a good effort. Green serving off of Skinner, and there is an ace for the Pioneers. Not done quite yet. Back-to-back -back points for Green with the kill, and now the ace. She's bringing the fire, too, trying to get this momentum shifted to her side of the court. Four aces for Denver. They're within five. Fleck. They set up Green. Madison Skinner. Green saves it. They go back to the sophomore, blocked by O'Neill. Haley Green tries it again, and Zoe Fleck answers with a diving dig. But the point for Denver. Pioneers now close the gap to four. Just when Denver thinks that's going down, Zoe Fleck flies to keep it alive. But Skinner trying to wipe that off the hands just went too wide. Pioneers on a 5-1 run. Just when it seemed like the match was pretty much over. SKT blocked at the net. Skinner denied. Sent second best blocking team in the nation. Stepping it up late here in the third set, 23-20. Caddy Boyer reading this well. Both of them swing blocking up, and that was picture perfect coming off that outside hand. And nice press over the net. Texas led by eight at one point. Asia O'Neill stops the run. Set point, match point on the way. The crowd on their feet, looking to see the hometown horns improve to 6-0 and on the season. O'Neill serving. Green, off para. Point Pioneers, 24-21. Not yet. Denver's going back to the line. Can they bring some aces to catch them up here? As we know, Texas has a high side out percentage. Match point again for Texas. Oh, SKT. <laughs> Nearly ended it. Pioneers now pull within two. Overpass by the Longhorns and Caddy Boyer ready for the point. The freshman setter Lauren Carter serving match point again for the Longhorns. And there it is. Service error to end it. Texas takes a close one. 25-22 after winning set number one.